Hello, today I'm going to review the biology of the spinal cord and the muscles, and then I'm going to analyze them using control theory. So first, let's review the Golgi tendon reflex. Um, first, I'm going to discuss the biological facts of what is going on here, and then I'm going to discuss how it actually works. So first, let's discuss the Golgi tendon organs. Uh, I have a picture of a muscle here. We have the bone, the muscle, the tendon in yellow, and in between the muscle and the tendon at this interface here, there are the Golgi tendon organs. The Golgi tendon organs, I've drawn them as these green dots. They are um, sense, they are proprioceptive sensors that detect how much mechanical tension the muscle is under. Um, when the muscle is being pulled on, the tendons stretch a little bit, and they get very tight. And this deforms the shape of these uh, Golgi tendon organs. And um, when they get deformed, there are uh, sensors embedded in them on the 1B nerve fibers. And these sensors, uh, they cause the 1B nerve fibers to emit action potentials. In re and they emit action potentials in response to mechanical tension and in proportion to the magnitude of the tension. So next we're going to talk about what's going on inside of the spinal cord. Inside of the spinal cord, there are two types of neurons that we're interested in today. There's the alpha motor neurons and the 1B inhibitory interneurons. Now, the alpha motor neurons uh, connect to the muscles. Uh, when the alpha motor neurons activate, they emit an action potential, and that electric uh, pulse travels through the entire muscle strand and causes a, the whole muscle strand to contract. Uh, every time you move your muscles, that's your alpha motor neurons that are talking to the muscles. Um, and then we also have these 1B inhibitory interneurons, and when these neurons activate, they stop the alpha motor neurons from activating. They inhibit them. Uh, so the alpha motor neurons make your muscles contract, and the 1B inhibitory interneurons make your muscles release. Now let's use control theory to try and understand what is happening here. Um, neuroscientists use the word reflex. Um, engineers use the phrase controller. Uh, and this here is a negative feedback loop. Um, the alpha motor neurons cause the muscle to contract. When the muscle contracts, it pulls on the tendon. And when you pull on the tendon, it pulls on the Golgi tendon organs, which then get stretched and deformed, which causes the 1B sensory nerve fibers to activate. They emit action potentials in response and in proportion to the amount of stretching. And that activates the 1B inhibitory interneurons in proportion to the tension in the muscle. And that shuts down the muscle by inhibiting the alpha motor neurons. Um, this is a negative feedback loop, and all of these quantities are real, co real valued quantities. Um, the neurons use rate coding to encode a real valued quantity. So when you want to move a muscle, you tell the alpha motor neuron how much tension you want in the muscle, and then this little feedback loop just makes it happen, and you don't uh, consciously worry about how many pulses of electricity are sent to the muscle, it, it, the alpha motor neuron just contracts the muscle until the Golgi and tendon organs tells it to stop because it got where it was supposed to go. An interesting thing about this design of closed loop controller is that you can act, you can increase the set point by exciting the alpha motor neurons or you can decrease the set point by activating the 1B inhibitory interneurons. So you can increase the set point or decrease it. And this is important when you get into cascade control and there are multiple people who are trying to mess with this controller at once. And you might have one person telling the alpha motor neurons, hey, push harder, and then a different thing like a pain receptor saying, hey, that hurts, don't push my joint that far, and that 
pain receptor can activate the 1B inhibitory interneuron, which will decrease the tension set point on the muscle and keep your joint from getting pushed past its normal range of motion. Next, let's talk about the intrafusal muscle fibers. Muscles are made of two types of fiber. There's the extrafusal muscle fiber, which is the big strong muscles that move you around. And then there are the intrafusal muscle fibers, which are small sensory organs. And they're mixed in together with the extrafusal muscle fibers. Um, these are proprioceptive sensors. They tell you where your muscles are located, how far contracted your muscles are. Uh, the way that they do this is with the spindle. The spindle is a special structure that's embedded into the intrafusal muscle fiber. And it is a stretchy ball, is a stretchy bag of cell nuclei. It is literally packed full of cell nuclei, which are full of, of DNA, and like a bean bag. And um, the whole thing gets stretched and the spindle is wrapped in an axon that responds to changes in its length. Whenever the spindle gets longer, the 1A sensory nerve fiber activates. It emits action potentials in proportion to the increase in length of the spindle. So now let's talk about the stretch reflex. The stretch reflex is the natural tendency of your muscles to resist being stretched. When you push on your arm, you pull the whole muscle apart and the spindle gets pulled apart as well. And that causes the 1A sensory nerve fibers to activate and they activate the alpha motor neurons which increases the amount of force in the extrafusal muscle fibers which causes you to resist the people pushing on your body when someone pushes on your arm. Next, let's discuss the other half of the intrafusal muscle fiber. As I'm sure you noticed, only half of the length of the fiber is the spindle. The other half is a thin string of myofibril. That's the same material that the extrafusal muscles are made of. It contracts under electrical stimulation. Uh, but this is a very thin amount of it, so it doesn't exert very much force. It only exerts enough force to pull on the spindle, uh, but it won't lift your body. Um, the myofibrils are connected to the gamma motor neurons. The gamma motor neurons cause the uh, intrafusal muscle fibers to contract. So what's going on here? The length of the spindle is what we care about. And the length of the spindle is the length of the extrafusal muscle fiber minus the length of the myofibril portion of the intrafusal fiber. So we're able to do subtraction using the length of these two types of fibers. Um, and the difference between that, those lengths is the length of the spindle. And we use the length of the spindle to activate the force controller for the extrafusal muscle fibers. So what's happening here is this is the subtraction that a closed loop controller must do in order to compare the set point and the sensory feedback. The sensory feedback is the length of the extrafusal muscle fiber. That's how long your muscle actually is right now. And the set point is the length of the myofibril. And the difference between those two things is the length of the spindle. And the length of the spindle is sent to the force controller to increase the amount of force to close that length. Um, this is the basis of a closed loop controller. So, in conclusion, when you want to increase the rate of contraction of a muscle, then what your body does is it activates the gamma motor neurons, which causes the myofibrils to contract at the rate that you want the whole body to muscle to contract. 
you set the rate of contraction of the myofibril muscle equal to the rate that you want your whole body to contract at. And that's easy to do because the myofibril muscle isn't connected to anything heavy it has a squishy thing in the middle that can just pull. So this has very little inertia. There's no limbs attached to it, really. It's, it, the spindle will yank apart before you actually try to lift anything with it. So the alpha motor, the, the gamma motor neuron is like setting the set point. And the set point is enacted on a physical measurement device that actually measures the difference between the rate of subtraction, the, the rate of contraction of the myofibril versus the rate of contraction of the extra um, fusel m muscles myofibril. Now, I want to add a detail here, which is that I have written 1A nerve fiber. That means that this nerve fiber is measuring the rate that the spindle changes at. It's measuring the velocity of the muscle. There is a different type of nerve fiber called the type 2 nerve fiber that measures the absolute length of the spindle and you use the type 2 nerve fibers as part of a closed loop controller to control the muscle length and you use the type 1a nerve fibers as part of this closed loop controller to control the rate of contraction and all of these controllers are connected into a cascade where the type 2 controllers activate the type 1a controllers and the alpha motor neurons and so they are high there's a hierarchy of controllers here and they are all ostensibly working together. Another thing to note is that these controllers can all be deactivated. You can deactivate this controller entirely by simply inhibiting the gamma motor neuron and this is very useful if for example you want to turn this controller off because you want to control the force controller directly. And finally, I'd like to take a moment to lament that neuroscientists seldom frame their work in terms of control theory. I think that's a lost opportunity. Um, I understand that it's difficult to learn multiple fields of, you know, science and technology and engineering and mathematics. Um, but also, I've personally found that it is immensely valuable to have um, a large breadth of knowledge. Um, it's valuable in unforeseeable ways. So I urge you all to go and gather up your disparate interests and see what connections you can make. Um, so until next time, meow.